well, a week ago, Izzy and I got back from Alaska, the Yukon, Northern Territories, etc. Had probably the, the ride of a lifetime, really. Uh, 6,500 miles last month. And we are cleaning the bike, changing tires, changing oil, adjusting valves, cleaning the bike some more, cleaning the bike some more, chain maintenance, all of that good stuff. Getting ready for a little ride out on the Olympic Peninsula. In between, I'm going to try and put together a video of the trip up there, probably in several parts. I've just got so much to sort through. But uh, we're going to start off with leaving this place here. Uh, which is in Acme, Washington, with my friend Dan Johnson, and departing for Alaska. So uh, I'll go ahead and start putting things together, and we'll get to that. This is where it pretty much all began. My little brother. Brian lives in Alaska, and he has his beautiful R60 BMW. And he has for some time invited me to ride up and ride on the Dust to Dawson ride across the top of the World Highway. And last year, he absolutely convinced me, and uh, this is where the whole quest began. When the idea first was brought up by Brian, I was staying with uh, Dan Johnson in Acme, Washington, who was a bunker biker host, very good guy. I uh, got a little KTM, which I was to learn much more about in the subsequent days. And he offered to let us set up in advance before the uh, before the ride. So without Dan able to go, this was uh, last July or August of 2022, um, it became up to myself and Izzy, which I certainly don't mind traveling with. We've done, done an awful lot together, and she's a, 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 the greatest traveling companion I've ever had. But I did ask uh, my friend William Nelson, Willie Nelson, if he might be able to go and uh, initially he wasn't and then a little bit later on in the year he had worked out some some obstacles and uh, called me up and said yeah i'm on board so this was a, a great thing and i was really pleased that willie was able to go along because uh, he has his dog atlas who is also a moto pup with about as many miles pretty similar to izzy and uh, they get along well and it just seemed like a great adventure. About that time, uh, Willie met a friend, Nick Brugman, who you knew as Full Throttle Nicky or Nicky's Shoulders, and suddenly there were three of us, me, Willie, and the, the man with the frunk, a thing to be discussed later. Come back across Yukon to Dawson City for the Dust to Dawson event. And on the bike here, all the pockets, do um, we have anything that's going to be left in Canada? No. We have alcohol, tobacco? No. Any fire? And with the border crossing behind us, we uh, headed off through Vancouver toward Whistler for the night. Uh, we decided on a pretty short day, the first day, not knowing how quickly the border crossing would go. Willie found a great little remote camping spot and we settled in. Hey. Canada! Canada! Woo! We spent that night near Whistler. Uh, enjoying a little campsite near a stream and got ready to move on out to Prince George the next day. The ride to Prince George was really marked by wildlife, bridges, lots of them, many of them graded, uh, seems to be a thing in Canada, and scenery that would just absolutely take your breath away. The photos just in no way do it justice. There were moments where, many, many moments where I was practically brought to tears by just the sights that we saw.
when we got to Prince George, we were hosted by a great bunker biker host, Larry Seville, who unfortunately was completely obscured by lens fog, but he was a great guy. In addition to us and a few other people, he was hosting a couple New Zealanders who are well worth following. We will run into them later. The next day we did a little shopping and one of the important stops was a sporting goods store where we picked up some bear deterrent items. Um, I don't know that I want to fight one off with a knife and of course you can't have any firearms in Canada. So the bear bangers became great entertainment for us. We continued on towards uh, Smithers, British Columbia and the start of the Stuart Casher Highway. We saw a lot of wildlife. Um, not all of it was I able to capture here by any means. Um, we had some camera difficulties I'll talk about in a while. But uh, in all, it was just breathtaking the entire time. It, completely indescribable. Right at this point while making the video, I had a uh, SD card break on the main camera. So we lost about five and a half hours of raw footage and a bunch of stills. But I'll be able to work around it in the future sections with the other cameras. Anyway, uh, most of this is up the Stuart Casher Highway, heading up towards the Alaska Highway into the Yukon Territory. It was just absolutely spectacular. Um, it's just indescribable. One thing that was very uh, moving to me is parts of this highway are known as the Highway of Tears, where uh, over the years, a good number of indigenous young women and girls have disappeared or been abducted. And not much was made of it until a Caucasian girl was missing and the, the difference became so apparent. It's a story worth reading and understanding and it's a very, very sad story. As we got up into the Yukon Territory and approached Alaska proper, uh, things just became more and more spectacular. And to tell you the truth, this is pretty much where the story begins, and we're going to pick that up in the next little episode.